Yo, what up? This is Division by Zero. You're locked on to the Canadian content drum and bass podcast with my main man, DJ Capulet. Keep it locked. This is CCDNB. CCDNB. Canadian content drum and bass. The first all Canadian drum and bass podcast showcasing the best in Canadian drum and bass production. With your host, DJ Capulet. Canadian content drum and bass. Canadian content drum and bass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exclusive. Exclusive. What's up? What's going on, everybody? We're back for another episode, CCDMB episode 007. Yeah. France. Grins from Toronto. A uh, track called The One For Me. This is the Nuisance Remix. You can check Grim at myspace.com slash Grimful. And the original vocals on this track were done by Grim himself. show coming up uh we got new music from vast malik vice locked and herbalist dubcom nuisance gremlins tons division by zero we'll be talking to you later a new ben sage dubstep tune which is forthcoming on subsonic Ooh, dubstep i don't know about that older records from pacific inside dream subtone and d region of course we got our canadian drum bass news with jocelyn b and we're going to have an interview with Furious Records in the second part of our show. We got online comments from our listeners. And we have some free t-shirts to give away, courtesy of Fast Forward Design Company. Plus the Canadian classic at the end of the show. Standard. Okay, let's do it. Next one coming in is from Malik. It's called Dumb Luck and it's a dub. Yo, this is MCZ representing the sound police of Solid Apparel. You're listening to CCDFB with DJ Capulet. Boomsa!
right now and you are the one like Malik, please contact me at ccdmbmusic at aim.com. You're just like a mystery man. Drops me two wicked tunes and then just disappears. No idea where he's from. He's from Ontario. You don't know where? I forget. I just talked to him quickly once on AIM. Yo, what up, this is Bryce, you're listening to the Canadian Content Drum and Bass Podcast with DJ Capulet. Keep it locked. Exclusive original vocals by a guy named Kier Edwards. This track's called Save Me, it's the Vice Remix. <laughs> Sound of apparel, let the DJ captain and kick it in. Woo!
Guest exclusive. Track called 1901. Pirate Sound Dub. Keep your eye on this guy, trust me. He's from Mississauga, Ontario, and this is going to be released on Friday, March 13th, 2009. Ooh, Friday the 13th. Again. Go and pick that up. That's good to remember. I'm going to send this one out to all the drone bass. Jump up producers in Canada. Sometimes those guys get a lot of flack. But I'm not biased. It's all drum bass. And a good tune is a good tune. Herbalist, something brand brand new called Front Back. They're from Peterborough, Ontario, and you can check them at lock-and-herbalist.com. And in about a minute's time, we got uh, some CCDB news with Jocelyn D. Covering all the Canadian drum bass news, you can check her out at jocelynd.com. Let's not forget, we got some giveaways from Fast Forward. And, of course, our interview with Furious Records. So keep it locked. Oh, 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 
time for Canadian Drum and Bass News featuring Jocelyn D. Brought to you by DBD News and Reviews. Well, you're listening to the Canadian Drum and Bass News on the CCDMB podcast. I am your host for the Canadian Drum and Bass News. My name is Jocelyn D. And I will have news today about Toronto's Sweet Sensi recordings. Royal Crown, uh, which is Arcola's label out of Montreal, Canada, Ben Sage, Vinyl Syndicate, and then finally Gremlins on Renegade Hardware, which actually isn't a Canadian label, but Rene- uh, Gremlins is a Canadian artist, so we're all good. Now the first news I have is just about Toronto's Sweet Sensi, Sweet, Sweet Sensi recordings, and they have their second vinyl release out. A couple years back, the label was set up by DJ Clear. They did have a release back then, but it's been a few years. Now they're back with release number two. This one is featuring Easy Sniper with a track called Pussy Dead and DJ Clear with a track called Beat X. And if you don't know, Sweet Sensi is all about the raga, in case you couldn't guess it from the name of the record label. The next news I have, it's it's more on the raga tip, and this is just about Royal Crown Recordings, which is Arcola's label. Arcola's uh, originally out of Montreal, Canada. And Arcola's known for his his work remixing reggae tracks into wicked reggae drum and bass tracks. So what he's done is he has um, dug into the vaults of Cookie's Reggae Shack and found a lost gem, which was Barrington Levy's 1981 six track 12 inch vinyl Run Kamya, produced by scientists. And then, in exchange for his work remastering and re-releasing this rare record, Puff Records let Arcola choose a tune to remix. So Arcola chose Lost and Found. It has been a labor of love for him reworking and refixing the classic reggae tune into a massive jungle tune. This remix also features original guitar from James Mella, and it was recorded in Arcola's studio. The B-side is a dubwise kind of tune called Warnia. So for more information about him, check out myspace.com slash DJ Arcola. The next news I have, it's about Ben Sage, which is another well-known Canadian producer. He is back with a release on Subsonic Sound Recordings, and this one is called Provisions for Survival. It is uh, an EP. On this EP, you have Plan 9 featuring J-O-T-J with a track called You, and you have the Ben Sage remix on this EP. Also, you have Ben Sage with a tune called Smash the Empire, um, Ben Sage with another tune called Last and Great Bastion of Freedom, and Ben Sage with another tune called Freeze. For more information, you can check out myspace.com slash bensage sucks or myspace.com slash subsonic sound. Next news I have, it's about a well-known Toronto label, and this is Vinyl Syndicate, one of the original labels in Toronto and probably in Canadian drum and bass. Now back in last year, they won the Best Label Award at the Toronto Drum and Bass Awards. And some people uh, supported that award, some people gave them a little bit of flack because they haven't really had a lot of new releases out in the last little while. Now, in response to that, and maybe just um, in response to the recognition and everything, they are really back in the game. Over the next little while, they are going to be having EPs from every artist. There will also be the Raiders of the Lost Dubplate EP series, and this will feature tunes that have not been heard, tunes that maybe have been hammered on dubplate for years so a lot of people have heard them at the rave heard them at the jam but they haven't been able to buy the tunes um because some of these will be digital releases expect uh, proper artwork and, and everything for each release and also careful planning to the sound of each ep now in addition uh vinyl syndicate the artists have been working in the studio making new songs and expect those to hit, I guess, the shelves of record shops and also the online shops in the next little while. And also look out for some new Crunk releases. And actually, I'm pretty happy about that because uh, I thought Crunk was uh, a fun label. Uh, people at the jam really enjoyed the tunes and I had a lot of fun playing them. 
So look for new Krunk tunes and also look for a Krunk Saga EPs coming out sometime in the springtime. If you want to pick up some Vinyl Syndicate right now, you can pick up the Elements release on Beatport or iTunes, and that features the great uh, Let Me Know tune. As well, uh, DJ Slip's Alley Funk is out on Furious Recordings. And on the other side of that release, there is a down-tempo kind of sounding hideaway, which features Jenna Anderson. And for more information, check out myspace.com slash vinyl syndicate and i believe they will be featuring some of the newer material on their myspace site now just to end off this new segment i have some news about gremlins and his tune is featured on renegade hardware's new deadpan ep this is out on february 23rd 2009 which uh today i'm recording this it's early morning on february 21st Saturday so this will be out on Monday and this is a double 12 inch vinyl release it will also be out on digital download and this EP has four tunes from four well-respected artists from four countries that are kind of known for their drum and bass I like to think so you have artists from USA Canada Hungary and New Zealand now representing the USA you have gridlock with deadpan Representing Canada, yay, you have Gremlins with a tune called Frankie Guns. And that's actually a funny name for the tune because uh, in Toronto we also have a DJ named Frankie Guns. So rounding out the EP, we have um, Chris Sue representing Hungary. And you also have CERN representing New Zealand and he has a track called Trinity. For more information, check out myspace.com slash renegadehardware 2 k 7 So... Thank you for listening to this section of Canadian Drum and Bass News on the CCDMB podcast. If you have news that you want us to feature or that you want us to talk about or Canadian Drum and Bass News gossip or anything like that, please get in touch with me or DJ Capulet. You can get in touch with him at aim at CCDMB Music, all one word, or you can get in touch with me. My aim is Jocelyn D. And I guess that's about it for today. So thank you for listening. And until next time, keep rocking out to the Canadian drum and bass. So I'm here with Frankie Guns. Legacy, play the record. I just wanted to send you a happy birthday, Mr. Frankie Guns. Thank you very much. Very happy right now. And he's going to introduce the next track. The next track is a birthday present from my main man, Gremlins. Bad boy from Canada. Ripping it up in the UK right now. It's called Frankie Guns on Renegade Hardware. Roll the track!
Hey, this is Gremlins from Hardware, Architecture, Cylon, Extinction, Agenda, Tech Noir, and you're listening to CCDNB with DJ Capulet. Hamilton representing the Breakbeat Assassins. You're in tune to DJ Capulet, ccbnb.com. the heavy bass hitter of the show tracks called guillotine it's by the breakbeat assassins crew that's uh, stranger diwa and rubbleton big up this is a dub forthcoming on their label that's gonna be called breakbeat assassins hey uh that's a real nice shirt you got on there thank you it feels so soft against my skin it actually does. It's a nice shirt. In fact, it was courtesy of the fine folks at Fast Forward Design Company. You can check them out at fastforward slash underground dot ning.com. We've got three shirts. Yeah, that we're going to give away. So if you want to get these fine looking apparels and your North American resident, just uh, email in ccdmbmusic at aim.com. And tell us what you've recently done to contribute to Canadian drum and bass. Whether it be buying a vinyl or an MP3 made by a Canadian drum and bass producer, or... We went to a party with an all-local lineup. Or... thrown a party in Canada. Yeah, or even if you subscribed or listened to this show. Or even if you joined the Facebook group, CCDMD. Or our fan site. Yeah, that's all That's all a way to contribute to Canadian drum and bass. So just let us know what you've done. We'll announce the winners, one guy, one girl, on the next show. So uh, just go to www.ccdmb.com and leave a comment in the discussion board on the Facebook group or email us at ccdmbmusic at aim.com. And you can also check out Fast Forward Design Company on Facebook and MySpace. Check them out.
recently got a request on the website for some Side Dream in Pacific. So I reached back and I got this one from 2005 on Barcode Recordings, a track called In Effect. They're from Vancouver, BC, and you can check them at www.sidream.com. Big up Van City. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. My man Nuisance with a track called Obsessive Compulsive. This is forthcoming on Vampire. You can check him out at myspace.com slash nuisance101. Release date unknown. my personal favorites. It's a track by a band called Awaking State. It's called Out There. It's the Jeff remix. Jeff, of course, is from Toronto. And this tune is 
available now on Furious Records, and you can check out Awakening State at www.awakenstate.com. I'm going to be talking with the guys from Furious Records right after this track. U Region Lex and Division by Zero. So keep it locked. One of the very first record labels in Canada to put out drum bass releases was a label by the name of Furious Records. And I've got DJ Lex, D Region, and Division by Zero here with us now. What's up, guys? How much? How you doing? Cool. Thanks for uh, taking the time to have a chat with me. And this is, I think this is the first time the three of you uh, have actually gotten together it's for been a while. while. I think been a yeah, long time. It's definitely been a while. So you guys have been doing this for a long time and running the label. You've been running it for quite a while and have so many releases out. So let's uh, start from the beginning and, and, and just tell me um, how did this all come about? Lex, do you want to do this? <laughs> well, um, I guess uh, me and D Region, we've uh, been friends for a long time since uh, grade school. And um, we, we've been making music together for since we were little kids, doing the band thing, just recording stuff. And uh, in about 99, um, we had acquired enough experience, and uh, uh, looking back on it, we probably didn't have nearly enough. We didn't but. have nearly <laughs> enough experience, but, uh, but uh, thought we had enough experience. We sure so. did. <laughs> so we uh, decided we'd, we'd pony up and start putting out a couple records and release some of the material that we, we'd been working on. Yeah, actually, in fairness, you ponied up. The first release, DJ Lex financed the whole first release. No, I'm serious. I'm not joking around. DJ Lex was the only one who was working. <laughs> and uh, no, it's true. And and he he financed all of Furious One through, out of his own pocket. It was like it was a couple grand up front. Like it was it was a fairly serious when you're in your early late we're, teens, we're in, early twenties. Nineteen like, or something. Yeah, like yeah. That's, wow. that's, that's so a, it was a fairly serious. big risk for you to do. It was a huge risk. Yeah. Yeah, but you, what when you're nineteen years old, what else is it a risk your life on? Yeah. <laughs> your, your life as you see it at that time on some music. You know yeah. what I mean? When you love music, you yeah. just you, you take a little risk. Like so, that. why drum bass? I mean, there's so many other kinds of music that make so much uh, more money than drum bass. I mean, we all know drum bass doesn't sell <laughs> as well. Amen. Uh, you know? uh, uh, well, we, I mean, we, we, you know, at it's that gotta time, be for the passion and the love for the music. Well, yeah, I mean, Absolutely. at that time, and that time in Toronto, man, you got the the rave scene was really was really happening. And he, Lex was kind of a part of it. He he partied a lot, and he he knew kind of he knew the guys who were involved in it. And then coincidentally, uh, Slip and Slide went to high school with me, and. Um, there was there were all these great parties to go to. There was the beat junkie happening like on Tuesday nights, and then moved to Friday night, then moved to Wednesday night, then moved to Tuesday night. But there yeah. there were just all these like there were all these great club nights that were going on, in addition to all the big raves that were going on every other weekend. And so you just kind of it it, it actually became like one of the cool it was probably one of the coolest scenes to hang out in in the late nineties. Like, yeah. Everyone who was anyone was hanging out in the drum yeah. and bass in the mid to late nineties. And on top rave, of that, music was rave. awesome. So right on. that's how we got into it. It was just it was. We really liked the music, and on top of that, it was the place to be, and you just kind of got, you couldn't help but get hooked on it. So then the next thing you wanted to do was actually, you know, you wanted to be kind of a part of it and make the music as opposed to just listen to it. The only way to make the music was to, you know, invest in it. Like back then, there wasn't reason and there wasn't really anything. There wasn't yeah. a cost effective way to get into it. So you had yeah. to get a big ass loan and buy a bunch of studio kit that would take up a room, you know, the size of your. Uh, bedroom, and then you'd, you'd sit there and grind it out, and then by the time you had like 10 or 15 tracks, you want to get them out to somebody, so yeah. the next, next logical step was 
Was it was it hard at first, or did you get the response? No, it was really hard. Really hard. Yeah, very hard. Uh -huh. I mean, there was a there was a really important asset though in Toronto, which was Eastern Block Records. Right. Yeah. So you had the Vinyl Syndicate guys who have been like nothing but nice to us since since we started. Like oh, yeah. you know, there's not always uh, kind of an incentive to be nice to people who are technically your competition, but they they were always really really nice to us. Right. Because there was and, the second label I think over in Canada. Yeah. You right guys after, came along right after like the, the Jedi third. guys who were even nicer to us. I mean, like those guys right. bought tunes from me and. Um, they yeah, put we, us on tours. We and had a long-standing relationship with Jedi. Yeah, those guys are those guys are really good people. They actually, Chris DJ Raw was the guy who put me in touch with Jenna G to do the Gentleman remixes because right. he used to work for SL Feldman, mm -hmm. and that's how we began. So he was just connected in what was going on. So long, but it's anyway that's a whole other story. But uh, but yeah, I'd say Eastern Block Records was the, was the first kind of piece we had, and that would help us get some records at the door. But we still had the problem of you couldn't sell enough units to make your money back, and so we had to go eventually look to the British for distribution. Yeah. Yeah. But importantly, right. the first couple of releases that we did, Furious One, came out in January of 2000, I believe. Uh -huh. And that was distributed through Fully Loaded, which was the upstairs the, yeah. of Eastern Block. Yeah. So it was, it was just a unit of like drum and bass. Right, everybody you know? just supported each other. Nobody oh, yeah. worked yeah. against each other. And like, yeah. you know, we got a call from Sniper one day and he says, come down to Eastern Block because I sold all your, like, you know, it's, it's just keep in mind, this was months later. Yeah. And um, we had we'd managed to filter out a few hundred here and there to like the odd US distributor who's now, you know, you've never heard of. Mm -hmm. And then Sniper calls one day and he's like, come down to Eastern Block, I got a check for you. And so, like, we figured that the money was lost, and we figured he'd never sell our stuff, and it ends oh, yeah. up, he did sell all our stuff, yeah. and he paid us for it. And that's, he financed Furious 2 by actually paying us out for Furious 1. Right. So we were like, whoa, I guess we might as well make another one since, you know, it's the same money anyway. And we made another record. But it was, yeah, man, these, those guys were scholars and gentlemen. Yeah, they really were. They, you know, they were one of the, I think, pioneers of uh, the scene here in Toronto, oh, so yeah. as, far yeah. as, as far as, as, far as I know. Yeah. I don't think any label, I don't think any label, including us, will ever make or has ever made the impact that Vinyl Syndicate made right. uh, outside of Canada. A little treat from Ben's archives, a little bootleg remix of Bad Company's Nitrous called Love of Nitrous. Exclusive tune never to be released. Enjoy. You're listening to CCBMB with DJ Kakakakaka. If you ain't down with it, you ain't down
Division by Zero. What's up, man? I'm good, I'm good. So, um, when did you start, uh, first start producing and, and why drum and bass? Well, I started writing music with Impulse Tracker in 97. And I'd always kind of been into electronic music and, you know, I just, I was actually away at camp one year and uh, picked up this guy's CD. And it really, really spoke to me. And so when I got back, I kind of like did some research online and um, on dial up, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so three uh, days later. <laughs> three three days later, I had like Impulse Tracker, and I still remember the version 2.14. And um, a buddy of mine, about uh, 18 months later, because I'd been dicking around with it for a while, we sat down and we wrote a tune called The Elephant Man. And it was at like 165 beats per minute. And we were like, no, it's got to be a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah. So we did it at 170. And um, Pat had been going to raves for a while. I just wasn't really feeling them. And uh, all of a sudden, we were like, shit, man. We just wrote a jungle, we just wrote a jungle song. And um, it really just, like, the speed of the music and just the complexity of the drums just, like, blew my mind. Oh, yeah. And I started listening to stuff. And this was when, like... You know, jungle was going through a lot of changes, right? And uh, like the darker sound was starting to really get developed around 99, 2000. Right. Uh, Vinyl Syndicate was obviously very big. Yep. Um, yeah. There was a lot of like, like it was moving away from the A man and more towards like the two step. Yeah, there was jump a lot up. of like those bad company and Ram. Totally, man. Just the usual turned the, suspects. Yeah, turned usual the suspects. Usual suspects. We're, we're and, starting to turn the tables. And so like, and I'd been DJing for a little while, and you know, logically, I just decided like I'm gonna start playing drum and bass, yeah. but Everybody that I knew was was DJing. Yeah. And um, so I started to MC. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was Ottawa's most booked jungle MC for eight years. What's your MC name? E equals MC. I've heard of you. Um, maybe. <laughs> I, I never thought it was very well, good. I know. did it because it was a Did you say time. I haven't heard of you? No, I said no. <laughs> oh, all right. Heard, oh, Jesus Christ. The fist fight's going to break out. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, no, and I mean, like, I, I don't know if I was very good, but like, it was a way to keep connected with the jungle scene. And I just kept on the producing tip, and Jungle just... And, and now you're Division by Zero. And yeah, I've been Division by Zero since so 2000. You know, there, now you know. Yeah, now you know. And uh, yeah, man, Jungle just stuck with me. Uh, we're going to play a track. What track should I play? Do you have a Canadian track maybe in mind that you can play on the next mix that you might want to play on the show right now? Something that's on the mix or not on the mix? Something that's not on the mix. We could do... Um, there's that SL, SL2. Ben, why don't you introduce this one? So this is a remix of um, a tune done by SL2. It's called On a Ragged Tip. And this is the Division by Zero 2008 drum and bass remix. Wicked.
I don't understand. It's a good tune, though. I like the tune. I love the tune. Wait, what, you want to know what? I want. I just want to know what the sample is saying. Um. I don't know. <laughs> I whack it all day. <laughs> you probably fucking do. Fuck off. <laughs> professional podcast. <laughs> I'm trying to maintain a professional too. <laughs> Let's go back to the interview, for God's sakes. Lex religiously listens to absolutely every demo that gets sent in. Like, you know how a lot of people will send demos into labels and they never hear anything back from them? Right. Um, he, every, it, the last couple of years has kind of been it's been a little more difficult because I've been trying to field those those um, those emails because Lex has become a very popular um, urban DJ and he doesn't have as much time to, to work like yeah. he doesn't have he don't he doesn't have full time to deal with answering emails but yeah. his when he was working the label full time um, he would answer absolutely every email that came in every demo that came in he would listen to and he'd give constructive feedback and I think right. that we picked up Stare and Fibs uh, Ben and Kent DS1, who's now, I think that guy's, he's gonna be a rock star eventually. <laughs> yeah, His band is incredible. Oh yeah, Awakening um, State. Yeah, Awakening State, yeah, Awakening they're, State. they're unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, to, to, it's really to Lex's credit, because most of those people that we got were because he was so um, uh, uh, diligent in listening to everything that came in and really oh, yeah. like trying to figure out who had something and going after them. Right. Um, so, I, I, yeah, anyway, so, for what that's worth. So if people want to send in their demos to Furious Records, very easy. Demos at FuriousRecords.ca. Wicked, wicked. We listen um, to them. Yeah. You can also find that on the website at FuriousRecords.ca. That's Thanks, Ben. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. True. If there's one thing that that should come across from at least the, this particular conversation is that you know you always always send your music out. If you think if you think you got something, send it and Absolutely. send it to it. Like for us, we're always happy to hear it because, I mean, Lex and I are getting older now. We got other jobs to do and we got other things to do. We're still running the label and we pay a lot of attention to it, but. When it comes to producing, I mean, we just don't have the time to produce, and we're happy to. We were. We want to help other people do it. This one pack that Ben just did. There was one track on there called Propeller that was brand new, and he just finished producing. He's like, "You got to hear this tune. You got to hear this tune." And Lex and I listened to it. We're like, "That's really good, it's man." Fresh got a nice. Yeah, it's, it's got a nice like uh, breaks break beat in it. Yeah, and it's on the mix that Lex did, right? You, you, it's yeah. on the mix. So, yeah, yeah. so, um, well, what happened was we were like, "Okay, well, we need something to couple it with," and Ben's like, "Well." I, I got some like I got some stuff I've been writing over the last couple of years, but I never send it to you guys because I don't know if it's yeah. I don't know if it's um uh, like you know if it's up to standard. We're like, well, I just send it to us. Just send it, and we ended up picking. It was supposed to be just a single. We ended up picking three tracks off of that, off of those kind of the the DBZ archives there that we wanted. And we, and we made it <laughs> and, into a four pack. And these were tunes from like 2003 to 2006. Yeah, but the, this really brings me back to something that I always tell people who are trying to get their name out there. And the name of the game for getting yourself out there is shameless self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like you need to put your stuff out there. You can't just send one email and just let it be. You need to follow up on these things. You gotta close the deal. And just kind of letting things be, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're happy with just, you know, if it's casual, fine. But if you actually want to start making some money and make a name for yourself, you have to push you've yourself. Gotta, you gotta, you gotta, gotta play the to game. Push yourself. You, you gotta, gotta push it. yourself. Shameless self-promotion. Yeah, I don't know what was put in Ben's drink, but, uh, <laughs> but I want some of it. <laughs> Here we have a track by Division by Zero. It's called Serial Killer. Have you ever seen that show, Dexter? Uh, no, I haven't actually. You don't understand. It's a wicked show on, I think, 
Yeah, I know. Them. I've been meaning to check it out. Just want to send a quick shout out to the Ritual Crew, Scott Free, and Psych One. Thank you for having me out a few weeks ago at Dunny. And it was a wicked. It sounded great in there. A wicked party. Yeah, I had a good time. Yeah, yeah. Tonight's the night, and it's going to happen again and again. Has to happen. I'm not much people. Exclusive. I'm the boogeyman. So we're back with label owner DJ Lex, D Region, and Division by Zero, and we're uh, talking about uh, their label, Furious Records. And um, I just want to ask that you guys were known as one of the first uh, Canadian drum-based record labels to digitize your releases, to go digital from from vinyl. That's right. Um, and how long ago was that? So about three years ago, you you started that was, making that the transition. Was the last the last record we put out was Terminator in two thousand five. Nice. Right, and, um, and around and around that time, you know, that was still it's it's not as uh, popular as digital music is now. So yeah, yeah Beatport, just starting. Beatport had just hit the scene. Beatport, Beatport just, had hit the scene a couple of years earlier, but it was just starting to get kind of mainstream. iTunes was really flourishing, but but Beatport was really starting to pick up momentum, and people were realizing that a lot of the kind of drum and bass. A lot of upfront drum and bass was available on Beatport as well as some really good back catalog. So, so again, another big risk you guys took going digital. Uh, uh, and um, did you guys get a lot of uh, people saying, you know, like, uh, are you crazy or? We got a little bit of flack for it, but uh, it wasn't so much of a risk. Like economically, it made a lot more sense because your <coughs> your upfront costs went way down. Like oh, yeah. your, your manufacturing costs went to practically nothing. Yeah. And your uh, ability to output music went through the roof because you didn't have to wait on lacquer turnaround and shipping and uh, distributor release schedules and all the other rubbish that you had to wait for previously, right? Right. But yeah, we got a little bit of flack from people who just thought that it's, you're not a real label if you're not putting out vinyl. Right, right. And I mean, in today's market, I'd say that's a completely false statement. I, but, but it, it, you know, I can appreciate how... Um, it may, it, someone may perceive a label that's all digital as not being a real label. However, like, especially at that time, like you're, yeah, you're I mean, way more open. It, I think yeah, we had also put out eleven now. pieces of vinyl. Like we put out eleven singles on vinyl. If you count our, our sublabel name records, we we put out eleven discs. They'd all done fine. Like we never lost money. Like, yeah, like aside from when people didn't pay us when they owed us money, but that's a whole other story, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. But no, like you know, we were able to sell records and and we sold we sold vinyl all over the, the world. Like we sold records. In, all kinds of countries in Europe and Australia and Canada yeah. and the States. So Amazing. it wasn't, um, it wasn't, I, we didn't think it was that like a big cop out or anything. We just thought it was the future of the music and it ended up it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. being the, the future, music. right? Yeah. yeah. So we yeah, kind of got ahead on the curve that way. And now I think uh, we got some really, we've got some really nice distribution deals. I mean, we're pretty much on every single service you can think of that carries drum and bass. We're on there. Now, you know, we obviously sell better on some services than other services, but yeah. if you, you know, if you're a Pure Tracks user, you can get Furious Records. If you're an iTunes user, no problem. If you're a Track It Down user, no problem. Doesn't matter what you use, we're on Even there. Amazon? Yeah, we're on like Amazon. Verizon? Sure. 
MySpace music, whatever Great. you use. Yeah. The simple fact is we, we got in at the at the base, at the ground level, and over the past few years, we've been able to lay the groundwork while other people were still unsure and wavering on the digital fence. Yeah. And the fact is that it's paying off for us a little bit now, and you know we're really happy that we've been there. And I do have to give it up to D-Region. He, he came to me and he was like, listen, we really need to do this. We really need to do this digital stuff. This, this is going to be the way of music. Talk to me, G. You know what I'm saying? I hey, hey, yeah. are you a gentleman? Can I try and see you? Will you see me through? And give me everything I need, baby. Yeah. Are you a gentleman? Oh, that's what you got to put oh, yeah. Before I'm giving love to you. Are you worthy of a girl like me, baby? Are you a gentleman? Are you a gentleman? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Talk to me, G. Are you a gentleman? Can I trust in you? Will you see me through? And give me everything I need, baby hey. Are you a gentleman? Oh, that's what you got to prove oh, yeah. Before I'm giving love to you Are you worthy of a girl like me, baby? We gotta send this tune out to all the ladies out there. Hell yeah. Shout outs to all the London crew that had me out for Valentine's Day. I bet that was some crazy shit. Yeah, that was a wicked party. <laughs> awesome. It was Melissa and White Trash Productions. track by D Region featuring Jenna G. It's called Gentlemen's The Amen Mix. It's on DIA Recordings. And I bought this in 2004. I think that was the day it was released. Sick tune. I used to play this all the time. DJ Lex has put uh, together a mix for CCD and Beat. It's going to be uh, the next uh, podcast. And um, I asked him to do, you know, obviously an all Canadian mix. And um, talk a little bit more about this mix uh, you've got. Well, I just kind of wanted to show uh, some diversity of the Furious catalog, play a bunch of different styles, and, and try to show something from all of our artists. So, you know, we've got. We've got stuff from back in relatively early days, right through up to the, to the digital now, and some of the Vinyl Syndicate stuff that we're going to be helping them with. Um, the Awaking State remixes, which I think we already touched on, yeah. as being top quality material. Uh, stuff from Division by Zero. So I just wanted to make sure that we were representing like a little bit of from kind of every uh, every era of Furious Records. So this mix is uh, kind of a window into the. It's just Absolutely. a little it's a little peppering of the Furious catalog. So you Furious can get a, catalog. It's a good overview and hopefully people enjoy Choice it. Choice cuts. And, yeah. get, uh, and it can spark some interest in some of the back and, catalog And as if, well. if you like what you hear, go to FuriousRecords.ca and you can hear our entire catalog is digitized. You can see the artwork and download whatever. You can listen to whatever, whatever songs you want. You get links to pick up uh, the tracks from your favorite service, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. www.FuriousRecords.ca is the website. Uh, you can check that out. Um, you guys on MySpace, like individually, or? Uh, I'm not. Are you guys? 
I, I am ish. Ish, yeah. I, I'm rebuilding it. I, I quit for a while. I got too many. My <laughs> spam, that's what I call it. <laughs> exactly. I got too much spam, but um, there's actually a really good service called um, Verb. Verb, yeah. yeah. Which uh, which I maintain a presence yeah, on. Yeah, I've heard so Verb. Uh, Verb.com forward slash um, UASC. That's Unlawful Assembly Sound Crew. So uh, if you want to check out some stuff, I got some uh, older things up there and um, some breakbeat, you know, dubstep too. Right on. All right, so I guess if you want to hear some uh, a lot more tunes from these guys, uh, keep in tune to this show. Because, That's absolutely uh, right. Sounds good. Because, Direct uh, pipeline right here. There we go. There we go. We got um, we all got some exclusives on CCDB. And thank you guys for coming out uh, and, uh, and having a talk with me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank Thanks you for having, having us. us. Wicked. Thanks to the Furious Records guys. Hold tight for the next episode. Track called Chaos. Dub play courtesy of the way dub comp. Check out DCS905.ca. All about representing Toronto Dark Side drone base. Check it out. Support your locals. This is Dubcon from DCS905 in Toronto. You are listening to the CCDMB podcast with DJ Capulet. Much respect. I know I told a lot of guys I would never do this, but I gotta make an exception, man. Cause this you, if you must. This, this ain't no regular producer. Sage with a track called Freeze. It's forthcoming on Subsonic Recordings. And this one's going to be out March 1st. You're listening to CCDMB with DJ Capital. If you ain't down with it, you ain't down with shit. <laughs> Alright. 
All right, it's time for some Facebook comments, some uh, wall posts, and some emails and such. We'll start one off from Joshua Smart. He wrote, this podcast is superb, outstanding, even for me, who nearly never is standing, ha. Huh? You know I got a shout out to all the creators, instigators, step takers, and the risk takers. Huge ups. Going from Matt Synthetics. We up CCD and me. Keep on doing what you're doing, guys. Peace, some side dream Pacific would probably fit in here real nice. And I played that one pretty early with Matt. We got up. another one from Neil McFarland from Kitchener, Ontario. Neil! Word up, back on the wall, boosting the spirits of junglists and drum and bass fanatics in Canada. Big ups, big ups, big ups. Scene. Yeah, man. I love our listeners. Graham Jeffries from Calgary, Alberta. Bro, awesome podcast, Capulet. Your jump up a reggae show is amazing. Didn't know Canada drum and bass was this good. Adam Woolwich from Vancouver, BC wrote, Wicked Group just moved from England. Missed my DMB. Didn't think it made it all the way to Canada. Didn't think it made it all the way to Canada. What's Buddy, wrong with you? Listen, drum and bass made it here a long time ago. We're all good. Michael Edward from Tampa Bay, Florida wrote, Much love to the CCDB crew podcast rules. I wish I could trek my way back to Canada. It's been too many years. And our last one is from Stephen Cook from Manchester. He wrote, Big up Capulet. Keep the dubs coming, bro. UK loving your style, man. Big ups to everybody that wrote a comment. You guys are awesome. The Canadian classic. It's time. It's time. It's time for the Canadian classic. This episode's Canadian classic. Kind of a personal favorite of mine. It's a remix of a track called Wishing on a Star. It's on a white label. This one's courtesy of D-Region, if I'm not mistaken. I apologize for the crackles. I used to play, I used to intro with it a lot. Uh, early 2000. This is LBSC, you're listening to Canadian Content, German Bass Podcast with DJ Kevin. Shows. Shout out to Pete, Misconduct, Shank, all my crew, Dubcom, Lock, Herbalist, Miss Bliss, it was Frankie Guns, Gremlins, the guys at Legacy, 
Oh, guys, the soul emotion and ritual. Here comes Animal. That future sound. Shoutouts to Blizz over at TDSK. And a big, big ups to yourself, the listeners. And anybody supporting Canadian drum and bass. This is all for the love of the music. No money being made. Your support fuels the show. So that just about wraps it up. Yeah, man. Keep checking the website, www.ccdmb.com. Next episode is a showcase mix by DJ Lex. And I'll be posting that in very soon, actually. I promise. So until then, support your local Canadian artists. We have some talented people in this great country of ours, and we need to embrace that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace out. Easy. www.ccdnb.com